Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Drew here from Lone Fox, and I am beyond excited to be sitting down and filming this today. I have been waiting for the moment to inject color into my home. If you've been around for a while, you know my style. You guys would know that I do love earth tones. I love natural. I love mixing a lot of different textures together. I feel like this is a good representation of like the color palette that I traditionally go for. I add pops of color here and there sometimes, but ever since purchasing this 1929 Spanish home, I have just been kind of working room by room. We just finished up the dining room, which is the one I'm sitting in, and we were supposed to go into my bedroom, but just to let you guys know, there was pretty much a massive flood in my bedroom. Not an actual flood, it was like an internal wall flood. All the windows need to be removed and the entire wall has to be patched up. So I've been documenting that process as it's been happening, but it is a big mess. And um, it has just been honestly guys, like kind of a little bit of a nightmare at the same time. So I decided to shift gears. I actually asked a lot of you over on Instagram and my community tab, which space you guys wanted to see next. And a lot of you said the hallway, which I thought would be fun because this hallway here, it has so many doors. It's actually pretty wide for a hallway as well. There's a skylight, a few different areas for hanging lights. We have a sconce placement. We also have a big arch into my bathroom. So there's just a lot of fun details in this hallway. I'm also kind of thinking high gloss paint on the doors and the trim. I just have this vision in my head and I hope I can make it turn out because it really is kind of a daring color palette. I think this video is going to be going up around St. Patrick's Day as well. And if so, I'll keep this in, but we we're having a St. Patrick's Day sale over on LoneFox.com. I just recently added a few new vintage furniture pieces I got back from reupholstery. My first ever kind of upholstered pieces over on Lone Fox that are vintage. There's also still some pieces left from the last vintage drop, plus just our traditional kind of classic assortment of really great items. So take advantage of the sale. Orders over 99 also ship for free domestically, so you get that discount plus free shipping. Great, great time to shop. I'm gonna get some molding at Anderson Molding that we could stack on top of the current baseboard to make the current baseboard look more chunky and like more interesting so we don't have to rip anything out and then buy all new molding. Just made it to Anderson Molding to get some trim that we're going to stack on the baseboards in the hallway just to make them a little taller. So that way we don't have to do any demo, pull them out, we can just leave them and add to them. In this section because they have a bunch of really great decorative moldings. I love this like gentle style molding. We also found this, which I'm really leaning towards. This is bamboo. I so love cool. the bamboo one. Like even just like an Ikea closet door. Ikea? That's just like completely flat and all there is is just that one little piece of hand. Yeah, so. this on the current baseboard and then paint it along with the baseboard so it kind of looks like just an extension of what's there. Got it. This costs $150 for all the molding and I think it's really gonna transform the hallway. How does this look? So this first color here is New White. Um, both of these colors are creamy. I imagine it's just, oh my God, it's the same color as the wall. <laughs> Has more of a pinky tone to it. This one's off white. So next to that, you can probably see how a little bit more green and kind of like a tiny bit more gray as well. And last but not least, we have our accent color, which is this gorgeous red in which I'm considering painting all the doors and the trim. This color was the color that I tried to do in the breakfast nook ceiling. It's This is Eating Room Red by Pharaoh and Ball. But we need to get this hallway cleared out. So you can kind of see here that this is where I've been storing that Architectural Digest Ikea bookcase that I created a while back. I've had to keep that because it's just such a great memory, but I haven't found the perfect home for it yet. Here's a dining room that Justin's in right here. And this here is the hallway. And the hallway really is quite like grand. It's really wide entrance to Marie's bathroom or Marie's bedroom, sorry. Entrance to my bedroom, two storage closets, another storage closet, skylight, which is super cool. And then my bedroom door is here, guest bedroom door is there. And then there's also this built-in area as well. So as you see, this hallway is pretty wide and it's 24 feet long. We actually had to measure it to grab some trim. So it's a substantial hallway and I want this kind of transitional space that leads you to all the different areas in the home feel part of the rest of the house. So as you can see, dining room through here and then kitchens over there, all the brown cabinetry. So kind of need to make some decisions that match the space. Something that I wanted to do before painting this room was actually 
intensify the molding a little bit. So I got some additional molding strips from the molding shop and I added them to the top of the baseboard. Always keep this in mind and remember that you can add molding on top of molding. Even if it's just from really any hardware store, you could find molding and stack them together because once it's all painted, it's always gonna look kind of like one piece. So you don't always have to remove your baseboards in order to make them thicker. Just add an additional piece to the top, paint over it and you're good to go. So it is prep day and there is quite a lot of prep because I am going to be spraying this hallway as opposed to painting it with a roller or a brush because I want a high gloss finish and you have to achieve that with a paint sprayer. So we have to tape off just about everything. The door's off. Nice. Put your hinges back in. We prepped the entire hallway and we thought it would be appropriate to paint spray because we have to get into all of these little details on the molding. There's a lot of doors, there's a lot of door trim, baseboards, there's these built-ins over here. Also the finish I'm wanting to achieve is high gloss. So with that, it's really recommended that you actually paint spray. So I actually got a new paint sprayer because my previous one was just worn out. I used it many times on this kitchen, my parents' kitchen. So I got a new one and this one is really great because it's like an actual professional-ish style, but it was about $200 and it's one that I think I'm going to be able to really have for a long time. It looks like this. We're going to give it a try, but the color that we're using is that Farrow and Ball Eating Room Red and it requires a specific primer in order to give it the proper tint and like color in the end. So we have to spray on the primer first on all the doors, absolutely all the trim, baseboards, everything. Are you excited, Justin? Indifferent. A gorgeous pink tone. I love it. Pour her in. Maybe like that? Yeah. Seems good. We're getting ready to go. This is a paint sprayer here. Have the primer in there. We did all the proper steps. Let's see how this goes. Oh my gosh. That's called painting. So yes, if your paint sparer makes that noise, just know you're out of paint and it's trying to shake itself up essentially to get the paint down into it. It's like literally bouncing and that's what it does. So I went around and I sprayed this base coat and I really wanna know if you guys think this is actually needed before adding the Farron Ball paint or if you think that this is just a ploy to get you to buy a primer, but I was scared so I bought the primer, you know? So I got the primer, sprayed it on all of the doors, all the trim, all the baseboards, absolutely everything, and I only did one coat of the primer because I was able to get a pretty decent coverage with the first spray, and I only got one gallon of it which covered the full hallway. Welcome to this Pepto-Bismol slash terracotta primed hallway, but it is time to paint the actual color on the wall. And I'm getting an indicator that my camera battery's dying. I've got to say the most incredible thing about paint spraying is the actual spraying process takes like 20 minutes for an entire room. Even if you're painting the full room, it is fast, but the prep process always takes the longest for sure. All right, I'm doing a check-in. It has been a few hours since we added the second coat. Look at the high gloss, you guys. Do you see that reflection? It is so good. This high gloss from Ferro and Ball, so worth the investment on the paint because it is kind of pricier, but I knew using their finish would be perfect and it looks so good, especially on the built-in. Like look, look at the built-in you guys. It's like almost, you can see me in the reflection there. It is insane. So this is what the high gloss red looks like in here and I love it so, so much. And if you recall, the swatches that we did were behind this door. So I actually wanna swatch our wall colors probably just right here, right to the left of this door so we can get an idea of the wall color that's gonna be everywhere else in this space. This one's new white. I forget which one we liked. I did swatch two more colors before I headed out to a weekend trip. The top one there is tallow and the bottom one is string, which is a lighter version of cord. So I opted for cord in the end. Look at those little teeth. Say hello, Winnie. 
<laughs> oh. Heading to the antique hardware shop in LA. It's called Liz's Antique Hardware. And I'm gonna see if they have any handles for the hallway because I feel like if I wanted an area in the whole entire home to have matching handles, it'd be that specific hallway. So this is a store. Look how much hardware is in here. It is unreal. Look at all these doorknobs. So essentially, we're gonna go through and see if there are seven that could work. The price points. These are all Spanish revival knobs and look how pretty this is. Oh my gosh. And as you can see, these are $1,250 a knob. So that's absolutely not gonna happen. I was thinking we could paint it black behind it so it just looks like a... Wouldn't that be good if we just painted right behind the keyhole black so it looked like an actual keyhole? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this could potentially be the seven that would be shown. I think that looks nice. Yeah. All right, so I'm starting to match up some of the handles that we're finding. We're picking out them from here. And these are back plates, so we just have to make sure that that looks perfect there. Yeah, this one has a what? Oh, but that looks fits perfectly. Alrighty, I think we have all 14 doorknobs picked out with the back plates for all seven doors in the hallway. All of our door handles are secured and we have just made it to our second location, which is called Judson Studios. It's a stained glass studio in kind of like Pasadena area, but look how cool this building is and their little like stained glass out here. I'm planning on getting new glass for that because the glass that was in there before um, looked like this. <laughs> a gorgeous blue and green, just marbled glass. And I don't love the look of that. So I'd like to get something more clear that lets in a little bit more light and also not as clear. Who let us loose in a glass shop? This amber and this blue. And these are our second options. Very dark because it's something that is dark. Oh. Good morning. I'm sure you guys are wanting to see this paint color in the hallway and the walls. However, first, I do want to talk about who made this video possible, which was Helix, the sponsor of today's video. As many of you guys know, I love Helix. They are a mattress company and they create the most... Look at this. Look at this thickness. This, I hope you could see this. I've had this particular mattress for years now. It, the entire process of ordering and then shipping, getting it and unloading it and unboxing it in your home is just so simple. And the thing that I absolutely love the most about Helix and what I recommend to you guys all the time is just how easy and convenient this is because you just take a sleep quiz online. It asks you a few questions about your body, your sleep style, and then it will basically kind of pair you up with a mattress that they think is perfect for you. But let's say for example, you don't love that mattress you actually have a hundred day sleep trial once you get it but I'm not done you guys the coolest thing about this is that the mattress is shipped to you in a box and to give an absolute 100% honest review on the mattress I just couldn't imagine myself having a different one like this is a bed you guys that I sleep in every single night I absolutely love my helix mattress and I've had the same one for honestly probably close to four years now I switch off sides I sleep on I'm weird like that like I'll sleep on one side for a week and then I'll sleep on the other side for another week because ain't nobody else in there so you know might as well utilize the whole bed i'm just kidding anyway my parents have one my grandpa had one my aunt has one both my brothers do marie our guest room my room i absolutely adore my helix mattress and i think that you guys would as well so if you are in the market for a new bed or if you know anybody that is looking for a mattress or a new bed definitely check out helix and use my link for sure at the top of the description box below because it will actually get you 20 percent off of your purchase plus two of their free pillows as well which are really nice i have those on my bed too Getting back to the hallway um i have to to fix a few of the doors. I'm going to share them with you guys once I get the doors fixed and put back on. We have to fix those this morning, but I actually ended up hiring uh, my painter to come and paint the rest of the hallway. He's going to be painting all the walls and he does everything like by hand and his just craftsmanship and painting is unreal and his price really isn't too bad. So I figured I would let myself just breathe a little bit, work on those red doors I messed up. I have a few doors and cabinets I need to pull off. We're going to respray them downstairs. So let's go. Winnie. Are you excited for the hallway to be done? So you can go back in it? Because currently, your 
here behind the gate. Come say hi. Oh. Hi, sweet man. We are outside at the moment because I had to bring some of the doors down because there is this high gloss like shine. Can you see that on the edge of the door there? However, over here, you can tell that I didn't hit with enough spray. Like, I don't know if you can see right in this kind of area here. And then this door over here, yeah, we just painted the entire wrong side of it. We painted the inside. I'm gonna pop up a photo of this inspiration that I found online, but they actually have holes drilled in them. And to me, they kind of feel very English. I also know that these are functional in kitchens to vent vegetables and different kinds of produce I want to add these to the cabinet doors because I feel like it's gonna add like a little detail and I created this simple little template I don't know if you guys can see these little black dots I literally folded an eight and a half by eleven in half then in half the opposite way Then once I had those lines I folded in on either side and then down at the top and marked where I wanted these five dots. We're drilling a substantial hole on all of these dot spots on the front of the doors and then we're gonna spray them and then add them back onto the built-in. Since printer paper is on the thinner side, I went ahead and just taped this on the front of the cabinet door and then just marked with my Sharpie and it transferred through the paper and onto the front of the door and I repeated the same thing with my second one. And somehow a lovely little filter got clicked on the camera here, so disregard the color, but I am using a three quarter inch drill bit that I got at Lowe's. And I'm just using my electric drill to go ahead and drill right through. If you are doing large holes like this, just make sure to go on the slower side. I sped this up in just for sake of the video, but do go slower once you have all of your holes drilled through, they're nice and clean. I did go ahead and give a slight sanding to those edges prior to spraying them. After I gave those a good spray, I went back inside and started to figure out how to remove this Murano glass light in the hallway, which I am going to be keeping, but just not in the hallway here. And we started popping back on some of the doors, including the original sconce that came with the home. I think this sconce is really beautiful, and I love the black paired with the wall color and the trim color as well, so I think it's perfect for this room. There's also a matching one downstairs. On the built-ins, I actually found these great little knobs on Amazon, super affordable. I'll link them for you guys, and they really match the antique knobs I got for the door handles like perfectly. So honestly, really happy about that. Alrighty, I switched cameras because the other one was making this hallway look so ugly. Like I hope that you guys can see. The colors are beautiful. I don't know what was happening with the other camera. I wanted to share with you guys the rug that I got for the hallway. Now I actually got this for this hallway when I purchased the home. So this is one of the first flea market hauls that I did so long ago, so if you remember back to it. And I bought it because it fit pretty nicely in this hallway section. I think this actually looks really nice in here. And I love the bit of black around the border. Oh, oh, she's opening. The doors are opening. So as you can see, this area of the hallway is more narrow and then it gets wider here. So we actually have the space for this furniture piece, which I love. This right here gives you an idea of how it looks from back here. Of course, I want to get these other doors on. Yes, please. Okay. And that one back up there. Ooh, this, that one actually looks pretty nice. So these here are the little dot accents that we added. And as you can tell, like you can't really see through them. It just looks black, um, like a black hole on the inside. But I'm gonna add the handles here as well. And I love the way that the built-in turned out. Not built out, turned in. I think it's finally time that we add the glass to our skylight and then we can get an idea for what the actual light looks like. I have a few options. I have a Facebook marketplace lantern and then we have a few different lights that have been around the house that were installed when I bought it that we could try up here. So this is vintage hand blown glass and you can actually see the little bubbles in it and the imperfections and kind of like the waviness to it as well. I got amber, red, and blue to kind of do like a primary. It's like an amber and a turquoise, so I think they're gonna be really pretty. Um, what color do you want next? Oh, 
there's always a light that hangs from here. And the other kind of fun thing about this is there's actually a bulb in the top as well. And at nighttime, it creates like a shadow box effect, which is kind of cool. I found a lantern and I will say it's a little bit larger than I expected. Marie went and picked it up on my behalf. I found it on Facebook Marketplace. I just thought the look of a lantern in here could be so pretty. 50 bucks for this lantern. The guy said he paid over 750 for them when he put them in his house. He had two. I got both of them because I figured I could put the other one somewhere else. It might be super large, but I kind of feel like the oversized nature could be cool. Look from this side as well. I think it's kind of cool. I do wish it was a hair smaller, but you know, for now, I can definitely keep it and then look for something on Marketplace, swap it in the future if I want to, but I think it's cute for now. Ooh, let there be light. All right, Justin, what are you doing? This is the light that is going to go up right there outside of Marie's door. And where did we find this light? At a flea market, I don't remember which one. Oh, I think it was Long Beach. Long Beach is a good one, but you guys look how cute this light is with the little scallopy edge, the ring on the bottom, the simple shape and how it kind of like frames the light bulb that is gonna be in there. I think it's so cute. We could even do a little shade if we wanted to mm -hmm. on the light. It is time to start styling this holly, which I'm so excited about. I actually spent last night from like 8 p.m. to 1 a.m. bringing stuff up, trying out different art, putting things around, just like playing around with a bunch of stuff. And that's why I have nails in the wall already. I don't know if you can see. So I do kind of have a general idea of what I want to do in here, but I haven't seen it in the natural light. It took everything down so that we could film today. And let's go ahead and start adding some artwork. I also remember that I have a furniture piece, this 1845 desk that I got in a estate sale a long time ago. It's actually currently for sale over on my website. So I'm probably gonna be taking it off because I think it might fit really good right here. And then the pie safe, I might just keep or put on the website. The blue desk that would be over here is quite a bit lower and I don't really have that much need for storage in the hallway per se. So I thought having that like blue desk and just kind of having it more as an accent piece might be cute and a little bit more easy on the eye as opposed to how bulky that other one is. We did a bunch of fun things with this art. So this one here is like a line drawing and it just had such an old mat around it. So we actually matted it on top of some striped fabric, which is quite cute. I've been waiting to hang this piece up, you guys. I actually bought this at a um, antique store in my parents' hometown and I bought it at full price. It was $695. I've had this for a long time because something, you know how they say art speaks to you? This particular piece, I love. It's like a French cubist piece. It has this lady kind of laying here and then there's this horse on the side. The colors are unreal and it's from 1930 France. It's signed Simon on the bottom. And I just love this art piece. It's such a cool one. I've been waiting for the perfect spot to hang it and I thought, go away. Twenty-five's pine cabinet was a little too old, so I thought we'd modernize the space and add this 1845 desk for a modern touch. Look at the color of it in here. What if this held all of Winston's teens? Oh, it's toys? That could be a great spot for them. Oh my gosh, that's a great idea. This piece actually came with a provenance letter that says it was made in 1845 uh, for a school in Kansas, which is really kind of cool. And I'm gonna leave that in there as well. I got this at an estate sale a long time ago, but I think the color looks really nice. I actually haven't even taken a step back to look. Oh, the size of it feels way better. I love the like kind of picket like two right here. It's so cute. I 
have such a perfect piece to just finish off this wall over here. This stunning. I mean, a lot of people would just pass this up. I see antique mirrors with patina like this. So fun and interesting. Like I love even looking at myself in them. And this one just happens to match the wall perfectly. And it just feels understated over here. I got these little vintage cast iron like 1920s bathroom plaques and they have like a woman and then a man. I'm adding them to the top of either of these kind of skinnier doors that is on the side of this arch because I have two and I feel like it's cute. Plus one of these closets is mine and one's Marie's. So I'm putting the male one above the male closet and then this one above Marie's. I think it is time to reveal this hallway to you guys. Now I'm giving you a little sneak peek in the reflection of the door filming on my phone camera just died but i am so excited and i love this hallway now this is not going to be everyone's cup of tea hallway i'm sure it's probably not it's definitely bold it's out there it's different but that's what i wanted this hallway to be because it's definitely the area that's going to be spent least time in the home so i wanted to make it more of a fun transitional space where you're just like oh my gosh like walking from room to room you get that pop of color a little bit of enjoyment and i love it that was weird Okay, I think it's time to reveal this because this house better not be haunted. Okay, let's go ahead and reveal it in three, two, one, go. 